well, you know what? There are those moments that you're going to feel older. There are those moments that you're going to go, oh, shit, I am, I am this age. You know, it's okay. Be where you are today and embrace that and enjoy it because at least you're doing something. You're moving the body because we are meant to move. We are meant to move, so. <laughs> Did you push record? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Hey, Silka. <laughs> Hi, Paige. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? Good, Happy good. Hump Day. Well, it's Hump Day, and, and it is just a few days before Labor Day. And this weekend, and that's why we're kind of dressed real casual today, we, or I, I wish you were here for Labor Day. I know you'll be here right after that. I'll be here on Labor Day. That's right. That's on right. Labor that's right. Day. But this Saturday... Uh, we are having a second act run, virtual run. And I, my good friend Sandra is putting it on and some of us are getting together and just getting out and, and, and get moving again. <laughs> so we, we talked about that. So he said, well, let's talk about that today. And let's talk about the importance of keeping moving after 50. And of course, you already took it to another level. <laughs> All I can say is this, like Soka, you're a hardcore runner. You're an excellent runner. You've done marathons, triathlons. Uh, no, I haven't done triathlons. I have done a marathon, but I would not consider myself hardcore anymore, which is one of the things we want to talk about is because I feel a little bit of a decline as I'm getting older here. And that's, you know, how do we deal with that as well? Yeah, I know I used to be a runner until I had reconstructive foot surgery and that ended after that. So that was hard for me. So I had to figure out what else can I do without not getting that runner's high. So of course I do biking and yoga and swimming and hiking, but there's nothing that feels better than that runner's high. So it's like anything, as we get older, our minds might be very sharp and say, oh my God, I'm gonna go out there and I wanna run whatever you want to run, or I want to bike 50 miles or whatever it might be. But this is not listening to this. And the rest of this says, uh, excuse me, I'm in charge here, and this is what I can do after 50. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It doesn't mean, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to be able to do anything. It's really about how do you accept and embrace where your body is. If you can't do what you used to be able to do 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, even if it's a year ago. So there's many different options and your virtual run walk that you're having this weekend is perfect because if you're a runner and you can do it, you run. If you can't run anymore or you're someone who hasn't really done anything, get outside and walk because there's so many positive things that walking does for you. And being out in nature is extremely healing for the spirit to connect to the soul and to give whatever your body needs and to release stress at the same time. Well, exactly. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we started the second act virtual walk and run club is to give people, you know, some extra motivation to get out and get moving. And so anyway, there's more on the website about that. I don't want to take up the whole time talking about this. Uh, but we do want to talk about the importance of moving after after 50 and some of the challenges involved with that and and not, and not how to overcome that from a physical perspective but from a mental perspective so talk to us about that because i know you always have more to say you know from that big level <laughs> okay so good all i can say is at some point there's a hard component of how do you accept where you are and you know when we're over 50 like i said the mind sometimes feels 25 or 32, but the body goes, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> we're a little bit older than that. So how do you kind of find a balance between what the brain says and what the body can do and then embrace that and accept it? Because a lot of times we push forward and we think we can still do what we did when we were much younger. And all that does is end up with injuries and, you know, problems. So as you know, Silka, what I always teach my clients and patients is you have to be connected to this the body. The body always tells the story. So if you want to get up and you start to run and your body gives you a hint that this is not the best thing to do, listen to it. There's a time to know when to push and there's a time to know when to, to, to really listen. So if you can't run, no big deal. You just walk. So either way, you'll be able to do something. Make sense? 
Well, no, it does. It makes a lot of sense. And we're talking to a lot of different people here. Like, like the run club really is, and we, I keep referring to it as a run club because it is, you know, get up and running, but it is, you start with walking. Uh, it, that's the most important thing. And then for those of us who have been running a long time, there does become, as you said, a certain time where we need to accept maybe we can't run quite as fast or quite as far. And that that is not you know, a, and I'm talking to myself now, <laughs> that's not a reason to hang yourself. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we need to do what we can do, but how do you reconcile that? How, how do you reconcile not feeling old when that happens? Well, you know what? There are those moments that you're going to feel older. There are those moments that you're going to go, Oh shit. I am, I am this age, you know, there's all those moments. But then when you have to remember is this, is that you know if you're doing something that you enjoy and being out in nature one way or another is healing for the spirit the mind the body the organs everything so if you're doing something that you at least like or eventually love that's half the battle so you have to kind of get out of your mind of oh my god i have to be the perfect i have to run like i did when i was 25 i need to be able to do the same miles and if you had surgery like i did and you can't run anymore well then darn it i'm gonna get out there i'm gonna speed walk so fast so fast you have to stop and say and ask the body, what can you do today? And then you do what you can do. And isn't that the best? As long as you're moving, if you're going to be a couch potato and never go out there because you feel like you can't be perfect or you can't run like you were when you're 25 or you can't speed walk like you were, it's okay. Be where you are today and embrace that and enjoy it because at least you're doing something. You're moving the body because we are meant to move. We are meant to move. So. <laughs> well, and, you know, on previous segments, um, you know, that we did on, on running and the importance and the benefits, there really is one, there's a social aspect to it because, yeah. What, yeah, you know, there's so many different ways to join run clubs or even, you know, go to races. Uh. We don't have as many friends as we did when you're in our 20s and your 30s because life changes, people move away people have families, whatever it might be. And I find that sometimes when you're in your 50s, um, 60s, you know, you want to be able to feel young again. So if you can get out there and connect, like you said, Silka, socially, it's a way to build relationships. And guess what? If you're single, you might meet somebody when you're out there as well, too, trying something new. Because remember, when you go out there, nobody who's out there is perfect. Everybody who's out there is struggling for, with something physically over 50. So just remember that as well, too. Yeah, no, that's that, that's great advice. Well, and, you know, like you said, uh, as we're recording this, we're right, at, you know, in front of Labor Day. So, you know, do check out our website, secondact.tv, and hit on the little banner that we have, Join Our Running Club. And uh, there's uh, some other videos that talk about what a virtual race is. And, uh, you know, we hope, we hope that you'll join us. Uh, Paige, do you have any... Um, other, you know, advice to uh, motivate somebody to get out and, and get moving? Two things come up. One thing came up when you talked about a race. Remember, if people are afraid, if you haven't run or you haven't walked for a while, this isn't really so much as a race. Right. It's just about moving. Get out there and move. And if you want to be dead in the ground sooner than later, stay on the couch. If you want to join life, get out of your home. Yeah, knowing your body. Enjoy Silka. Yeah. <laughs> so Silka, for those of us who are going to join you virtually and who have been joining you virtually maybe and are medalists like me, <laughs> how does someone like me get a medal if they join virtually? Well, you will just register online. Then when you upload your, when you finished, you know, the, the, the 5K, which is 3.1 miles, you don't have to do it all at once, but all that information is, is in the... Um, information on the website we will mail you the medal here, here, it, there it is again it's beautiful See, i love the colors <laughs> yeah second act so anyway it's kind of a fun thing and it does you you I, i'm very much into the medals and the running every time i look at them i feel like oh wow i you know i did that so if you're so inclined you know we do hope you join us and we'll see you Paige, very soon on another episode of our second act with Paige and silka for your second act of life. Perfect. Thank you, Paige. See you next week. Okay. Thanks, Silka. Bye. If you haven't already-
already done so, please just take one second and subscribe to our channel. The button's right over here. And for more information on the Second Act Virtual Run Walk Club, just click on the link in the video description below. We hope you'll join us online. Thank you.